Hello everyone. In this recording, we are going to discuss about fundamentals of investing. So this would be just an overview. In next few chapters, we are going to discuss particulars like how do you invest in bonds, how do you invest in stocks, how do you invest in mutual funds. But this is like an introduction to it. Okay. So when you are preparing for an investment program, it is extremely important that you should have goals in mind. There is a famous saying, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail, right? So you need to plan properly. And for planning, you need to visualize where you have to go. What goals are you achieving? So establishing investment goals are important. Financial goals should be specific and measurable and tailored to your particular financial needs. Ask yourself, what will you use the money for and how much will you need? How will you and how how will you and how long until it is obtained? How much risk are you willing to assume? Are goals reasonable and are you willing to sacrifice current consumption to invest? What possible economic and personal conditions could alter your investment goals? What will happen if you don't reach your goals? Consider your economic circumstances. Are your investment goals reasonable? etc so consider all of these questions while designing goals so do you want to actually have that is it necessary for you are you able to save for it so consider all these questions while designing your investment goals and just having a random number so i want 1 million dollars when i retire it doesn't achieve so what do i want to do when i retire I want to be self-reliant. I want to actually perceive things I like. I like to travel the world. So I need money for that. So that gives you motivation to save rather than just having a dollar amount. So it's very important to visualize why you are saving it. Then it gives purpose for saving and that's extremely important. Performing a financial checkup. So generally before you start an investment goal, perform a financial checkup, live within your means. So reduce. So before you save, right before you invest, first reduce your high interest debt. So you reduce your credit card debt and start living reasonably well within your means and then look at investment. Obtain adequate insurance, start an emergency fund you can access quickly, so three to nine months of expenses, have access to other source of cash for emergencies, so line of credit is a short term loan approved before money is needed, cash advances on your credit card can be other source, so insure yourself first, pay off your credit card bills, have a line of credit in case of emergency, build an emergency fund and then plan your investments getting money to start an investment program prioritize your investment goals how badly do you want to achieve them so these are certain principles that are extremely important pay yourself first so this principle states generally what do we do we get money we spend it and then whatever is left we save that's a wrong way of approaching it so what do you do when you get money first save and then start spending so save let's say 15 percent or 10 percent of your income and whatever is left try to live within that income so that is how pay yourself first principle works participate in elective saving programs so payroll payroll deductions or electronic transfer so that works very well so the moment you get paid transfer that amount into some savings plan make extra effort to save one or two months a year so you should dedicate few months in a year where you will make extra savings so let's say on an average you save 15 percent of your income in these months you will save at least 30 percent of your income so that is dedicate these months to save take advantage of employer sponsored retirement programs so employer sponsored retirement program means they, there are sometimes matching dollar savings schemes so example i used to work in rbc so rbc had this plan so if i contribute one dollar rbc will contribute 15 cents to my savings plan so make use of such plans because they are quite beneficial then take advantage of gift inherit 
inheritances and windfall for example if you're getting a tax uh, means if you're going to get a tax credit so you can have plans in store for saving that tax credit instead of using it so many people don't start investing because they only have small amount but small amounts invested regularly become large amounts over time so this you have to remember so amount you save is not important how long do you save is important so time plays a very important factor so even if you start with hundred dollars per month saving that contributes to a large amount in 40 years or in 30 years so no matter what you are able to save right now start it factors affecting choice of investment so safety and risk the potential return on any investment should be directly related to the risk of investors risk the investor assumes safety in an investment means the minimum risk of loss the potential return on any investment should be directly related to the risk the investor assumes this means that whatever risk are you are comfortable with so there are two parts to this the risk that i can take and the risk that i am comfortable with so my risk tolerance right my ability to take risk and my attitude towards risk so both of this combined will impact my choices of investment so if I'm not able to take risk because I have a lot of dependence on me, I don't have much savings, I'm hardly able to save, then I need to have a conservative investment plan. If my attitude towards risk is very conservative, I personally don't like losing money, right? Then again, my choices of investments would be conservative. But if my if I have a lot of cushion in hand, I don't have much dependence on me right then i can assume risk same way if my attitude is i am comfortable with taking risk then also my choices of investments would be risky risk tolerance is the amount of psychological pain you are willing to suffer for your investment so risk associated with investments you could lose all our all or part of your principal the purchasing power of investments can decrease so you are not even meeting what inflation is doing to your investments you may not be able to receive the returns you expected so investment safety and risk so safe investments include savings account government savings bond canada treasury bills guaranteed investment certificates, term deposits, certain negotiable corporate and government bonds. So all these are considered safe. So savings account are considered safe. So government savings bonds are considered safe. GICs are main instruments that are considered safe. Term deposits, certain negotiable government and corporate bonds, etc. are considered safe. Speculative risk. A high risk investment made in hope of returning earning a large profit in short time so speculation speculative risk means certain instruments are extremely speculative so you can make a lot of money but you can lose a lot of money too so higher potential income investment includes speculative stocks certain bonds commodities options precious metal or stones mutual fund real estate and collectibles so all this are considered speculative so whenever you invest there are certain risks that you need to be aware of so business failure risk so if you're investing in a stock or if you're investing in a bond so you're giving your money to a company to do business so you are effectively dealing with a business risk so if the company fails then the stocks will go to zero and it will not be able to pay its commitments its commitments on bonds so you may lose money on stocks bonds and preferred shares so all these three investments you are dealing with a business failure risk so businesses will be less profitable than anticipated and the value of your stocks preferred shares as well as your bonds may fall Inflation risk, return on your investments will not keep up with inflation. So purchasing power may go down. Interest rate risk, 
so changes in interest rates may affect your investments market risk value fluctuates because of behavior of investors in the marketplace so stock markets are an example so not only stock performance is based on how the company is doing but it also depends on how the investors are thinking about the market so if it is a bull run and investments are coming in and it is the markets are going up you may get return and even though the company is doing well but if the markets are falling you may lose money so you have to be aware of the market risk also and global investment risk so we are also impacted by whatever is happening in the globe so canada it's like a backyard of united states so whatever happens with the united states because they are our main exporting partner so it impacts indirectly us also so you have to be aware of global investment risk then investment income so you can invest for investment per income purpose so purchase certain investments because you want a predictable source of income so gic savings bonds and treasury bills are example so other sources of income are not as predictable so mutual funds and real estate rental properties speculative investments like precious metal gems and collectible offer little potential for regular so what is investment income you may decide to invest because you need a regular stream of money coming in so possible investments that you can make for that are bonds gic's and bills that pay regular income then you can also invest in certain stocks or mutual funds that pay you dividends regular dividend then you can also buy a rental place and you can also buy a residential property and rent it out and get regular income from that okay you can invest for investment growth so investment growth means investments will increase in value generally you go for common stocks so growth stocks are a form of common so stocks if you see matured company generally pay good amount of dividends but growing company generally don't pay much dividend they reinvest their money back into the business and they grow their business so you have to always take a call either i want mature companies that pay me regular income or i want growth in my investment so i go for companies that are growing but they don't pay dividend as much so growth stocks reinvest their retained earnings examples for that you can use for growth is bonds mutual funds and real estate investment liquidity the ability to buy or sell an investment quickly without substantially affecting the investment values so liquid investments are generally savings accounts and your checking accounts stocks of equity financing so equity capital what is equity so you provide money to companies to do business and in return for that the companies provide you some part of ownership so equity capital is provided by stockholders who buy shares of a company or stock stockholders are owners and share in the success of the company a stock is a certificate that shows the amount that the company uh, amount of company that you own shareholders share in the success of the corporation and makes it an attractive option for example if you invest in apple what are you doing you are giving money to apple and apple is giving you ownership so if apple does well in future you benefit from it if apple doesn't do that great as you anticipated then you lose money on your investment so you share in the growth story of that company equity capital is the money that business obtain from its owners a corporation is not required to repay the money obtained from sale of stock so if apple if you are buying stocks from apple apple is not required to pay back your money so apple uses that money for their business and you are never paid back from apple so when you sell stock on the exchange you are selling it to an another investor you are not selling it back to an back to the apple they are under no obligation to pay dividends to stockholders they may instead retain all or uh, all or part of the earnings 
dividend it is a distribution of money stock or other properties that a corporation pays to stockholder corporate and government bonds a bond is a loan to a corporation the federal government or municipality bond holders receive periodic interest payment and principal that they lent is repaid at maturity bond holders keep the bond until maturity or sell it to another so how does bond investment work you give money to a corporation corporation or anything means government start paying you coupon or interest and when the bond matures they pay you back the principal right so you give money the corporation or government pays you interest and when the bond matures they pay you face value this is how any bond works mutual funds so mutual fund means you pool your every investor pools their investments they give it to a mutual fund company mutual fund company manages that money on behalf of these investors and whatever returns they get they pass it on to investors so investors money is pooled and invested by a professional fund manager you buy shares in the fund it provides diversification so instead of buying one stock they generally invest in an array of stocks so you get your your diversification funds range from conservative to extremely speculative so match your need with the fund's objective segregated fund so an investment alternative in form of an annuity similar to a mutual fund but that it provides a certain so it's a combination of insurance and investment so spe- segregated fund means there is a minimum payment that you would receive so your minimum capital is insured and rest of it is speculative so rest of it depends on the performance of stock so it is combination of insurance and investment sold by life insurance companies can be bought and sold at any time the benefit of segregated fund is it you can structure it so that it doesn't come into bankruptcy proceedings so you can structure it as a trust for your beneficiaries and that cannot means that may not come in your bankruptcy proceedings so you are secured in that way real estate you can buy properties and sell it when the there is increase in value the location 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 is important before you buy property consider is a property price competitively what type of financing is available how much are the taxes what is the condition of nearby buildings or houses why are the present owners selling could the property decrease in value how will i maintain and care for the property can i afford the mortgage payment so real estate is a very interesting thing so a lot of people think they can make lot of gains in real estate but if you see average gains in canada it is 3 to 4% that's not extremely high so in recent years it has appreciated by 10% or 8% but overall the average gain is around 3 to 4% so you have to always remember that securitized debt instrument securitization means you can buy into mortgages so securitization is a process in which debt is passed to an entity that in turn breaks the bonds and sells them so this is wrong this is for real estate so location is not important so what does securitization means a credit card company has money that it is going to get from all the credit cards that it has issued right the credit card debt it has so what it does it sells that debt to investors so as an investor you are buying into that credit card debt so whenever the debt is paid back you get paid right so you can buy into credit card receivables wholesale receivables retail receivables and installment receivables so this is a good way to get into to buy into debt so instead of buying a bond you can buy a securitized instrument so it exactly pays like a bond so bond pays company that is issuing bond pays you coupons so company that is issuing your securitized instruments pays you when they get paid other investment alternatives are a speculative investment is high risk investment made in hope of earning relatively large profit in short terms 
so speculative instruments are antiques and collectibles options derivatives commodities coins and stamps precious metals and gemstones antiques and collectibles etc these are extremely speculative so what factors affect your investment choices so diversification so most important thing is spreading your assets among several types of investments to lessen the risk so don't put all your eggs in one basket you have to spread them out always create a personal investment plan establish goals and determine the amount of money needed to obtain them evaluate risk and potential return on different investments after choosing your investments continue to evaluate your program now this is extremely important this pyramid is extremely important so this covers different level so level 1 is financial security so for financial security you invest in cash commercial deposits money market mutual funds and government bonds so these are safe instruments so when you cover your level 1 so once you have enough funds in level 1 you then choose for level 2 3 and 4 level 2 is safety and income so it, the investments are relatively safe and they provide decent amount of income so canadian securities so generally comes stocks of big companies and matured companies selected corporate and municipal bonds income stocks and conservative mutual funds come in level 2 level 3 is you aspire for growth so growth stock growth oriented mutual funds and rental properties are considered investments here then you speculate so speculative stock options commodities and other high risk investment so how do you go about it generally you consider level 1 that is financial security once your financial security is taken care of you have enough emergency funds and enough liquidity then you go then you choose between 2 3 and 4 generally most of the investors go for some part of 2 and some part of 3 depending on their age so if you are young you generally go for growth rather than safety and income if you are closer closer means if you are closer to your retirement age you go for level 2 rather than level 3 speculation you can go for if you understand the risks that are involved in step for effective investment planning establish your investment goals determine the amount of money you need to obtain your goals specify the amount of money you currently have available for to fund your investments list different type of investments you want to evaluate evaluate the risk factor and potential return of investment reduce possible investment to a reasonable number choose at least two different type of investments so diversify and continue to evaluate your investment program so this you can pause and fill it out so factors that reduce investment risk so role of a financial planner so seek professional help from stock brokers lawyer accountant bankers and insurance agents or chartered financial planner be be aware of how they are paid and how this influences the advice they give generally mo you can either have fee based or commission based so fee based means they charge flat fees but they don't get any commissions so advice from these kind of agents or these kind of intermediaries is little bit secured because their advice is not tainted by commissions but if you are working with a commission agent nothing wrong with it but you have to be aware of the agency problem so he may prescribe you investment products that are more beneficial for him rather than you your role in investment process always evaluate potential investments monitor the value of your investments keep accurate and current records be aware of tax consideration including tax deferred and tax exempt investments keep track of capital gains and losses interest income rental income and dividends check to see if you qualify for a capital gain exemption so farm land is and certain small businesses have capital gain exemption for around 800000 so check if your investments qualify for that 
Now, where do you get investment information? You can use internet and online services, use an internet search engine, use websites like Cano Money, The Balance, The Globe Investor and Investopedia. Online newspapers and news programs are a good source. Business periodicals and government publication, corporate reports, financial statements you get from there. So how a company is performing. Then statistical averages like stock exchanges and means the stock indexes are generally averages so that's a good source investment service and newsletters desktop and mobile information services so these are few examples so this was a short recording now this gives you a basic understanding of it and we'll build on these understanding